I'm Jessica Benson with USCFootball.com here with Dan Weber for instant analysis after practice today. One thing that Coach Helton no said after practice was that there are only 47 scholarship players who are going to be playing in Las Vegas. Obviously kind of an alarming number. Well, and then he said, well, maybe we'll get some you know, more back. But uh, right now they're going with 47. And uh, of those seven offensive linemen, uh, so uh, he said, I think he described it as bare bones. Uh, but still, you know, maybe only have two of their six tailbacks. But, uh, you know, Buck Allen and Ty Isaac have been a pretty good combination. Uh, on the offensive line, you'll be able to plug in Abe Markowitz, a 60-year guy at center. And uh, John Martinez is back at his right guard spot next to Kevin, you know, Graff. So, you know, and he's a senior, fifth-year guy. So, uh, you know, right now they're on the edge, you know, in terms of numbers. But, you know, they've got a team that they can certainly go compete. Obviously still some injuries out there that they have to deal with. you got Hayes, Jabari Ruffin, you notice, and Trey Madden is touch and go with his ankle. How will that continue to affect this team? Well, I think Trey, you know, they're not going to be able to count on him. Uh, I don't think the first time we've heard today, he had a high ankle sprain on top of, you know, he's been nursing that hamstring. Uh, so they think that'll be right up to game, game time before they know about him. Uh, they expect both uh, Hayes, I think, and Jabari. Uh, Hayes had just uh, stepped in a hole, he said, and kind of sprained his back a little bit. And he expects to be back full go on Saturday, uh, as they think Jabari will be as well. So they're, they're pretty optimistic about them. Silas Red, I don't think we, they're not quite so sure his, his knee is, you know, not where they'd like it to be, but, you know, he's out there and practicing. Another big topic is which of these players are going to return the juniors who are draft eligible. Sounded today like Hayes is maybe even considering coming back now. Well, he's real positive about, you know, we only lose two guys, he said, and uh, we could be really good on defense. And even if uh, we, you know, it's a third defense in three years for him, he said, yeah, I don't worry about that. He said, but this team could be pretty good. Uh, Dion Bailey said he's sitting down with his parents tonight. He'll decide. His comment, though, was, uh, you know, after the bowl game, he said, you know, we'll kind of leave these guys something to, to you know, pick up, with, you know, for next year. So it wasn't a complete, you know, I'll be here with them for next year. It was more that we'd like to leave them something, you know. But uh, he said if he decides, and he said he thinks he'll decide before the bowl game, he's not going to say anything till after the game. Well, first things first is the bowl game. They obviously they have a couple days off now before their next practice because of a final schedule. They even get to go home for Christmas this year before a bowl game. Kind of an entire different schedule of practice before the game this year. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a double, you know, good hit, good hit there because it gives, uh, as um, Clay Helton was saying, this gives them three days to game plan. They really haven't put in the game plan, so that gives them three full days. He said they're going to need it uh, after looking at uh, Fresno State. And then when they come back Saturday, it's kind of, you know, Saturday to Saturday game, um, it's a chance to really, uh, you know, kind of a game week and uh, put it put everything in starting Saturday. So, uh, and I do think probably with all the things that have happened off the field and the coaching staff and all, just talking to Mike Eckler and <laughs> trying to get around, the, you know, the question of have you had, the, had a discussion with Sark? Yeah, a brief discussion. Uh, what about, you know, how's this working out? And he said, well, I had a 90-minute discussion with my replacement at linebacker coach. So he uh, said he's a great guy, great coach. They're in great hands. I wanted him to make sure he knew exactly what kind of players he's dealing with and what kind of kids these are and all of that. But he said, you know, they did a great job here. I have no, you know, complaints. Pat Hayden, I might not agree with it, but they, it's their call. And he said, I'm going to be fine. But uh, he just dropped that in. He said, I had a 90-minute meeting with my replacement at linebacker coach. So that's how things are going here. You know, you got, you know, a couple of different ways of looking at it. Uh, these, this coaching staff has really been amazing, not only what they did the last eight games, but what they're doing now. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty special. Well, and with all of the changing and movement and the adversity this team has faced, they are still going after their 10th win here in Las Vegas. And the attitudes for this bowl game seem to be a lot better than last year. There's a one big reason why. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> he's not here and uh, it makes a big difference even with coach Ed and that's what's interesting you hear kids saying things like coach Helton's not trying to be coach Ogeron but he's a little there's a little bit of a glimpse in, in coach Ogeron coach Helton you know uh, coach O is still here it's kind of interesting you know the way they're saying that that, that coach O is still here 
Well, it'll be interesting to see how he continues to be with them throughout the bowl game. I'm Jessica Benson. This is Dan Weber with USCFootball.com. You can catch more on the web.